Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to introduce today uh, Rolling Thunder. We're testing this for Stephen Dixon, and um, it's going to be put out by Legion Games. And uh, Robert Best, I believe, is the other. Um, don't want to leave anybody out. And um, we're learning this, so... Um, We'll do the best we can. This module and the game are unavailable except to test players, so please do not ask for it. And um, I am, this is like my really second or third mission, so I'm semi familiar, but not completely. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna go through it. Um, campaign calendar campaign one runs from 10 august 66 to 10 september 66 and really more than anything we are checking out the playability of the game um not the uh campaign i'm just doing this so i have missions lined up to test run without having to keep re-rolling for pilots etc um so we will be starting today on the um 10th of August 1966 and as usual I have Excel as my uh, um, log and I'm going to put myself down as a Lieutenant JG it kind of rubs me the wrong way to give myself a Navy rank, much less a, a officer rank. I'm enlisted Marine, but uh, that's a whole different story for another day. Uh, we will not be using Division Sky Sheet. I'm not even going to start messing with cam uh, optional rules or campaign rules or anything. We have a loadout sheet, an ordnance sheet that we'll be filling out as we... Uh, um, fly our mission or figure out where we're attacking and we have the mission record sheet and on the mission record sheet we can fill out the name and rank and uh, this is campaign number one date Mission number one. All right. Um, so setting up the mission, and I'm going to go through this slow so we can both learn it as we go. So those of you that are play testing may kind of pick up on some things or tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Um, bear with me. This will be kind of awkward as I fumble through everything. I guess I've done this before, but um, I want to make sure I'm get, getting it right now because now I'm under the gun and online. So first off, um, let's get the charts up here. And campaign experience. We start out green. But we can, we're going to keep this up here. We don't need the calendar up here no more. We start out at green, and um, we don't have any experience yet. So while uh, we can roll for target and, and recovery weather, we will do that right now. We roll a d10. We get 10 good weather for target. And weather for recovery. We roll a seven, which will be good weather for re uh, recovery too, or trap, which is good. Now, planning events. Um, planning events, I think we only get them if uh, we roll one. I will pause this as we uh, stumble here. 
Okay, that's right. Your planning events only happen if you roll a random event on your gazetteer. So we will now look for our target. Our target for today will be no no advertising here, Greg. Uh, Foo Fan and E. We're looking at a three POL storage. So. Target will be POL storage. And Fuvan and area. Actually POL. Be area. And Fuvan. Okay, uh, we're good on that. So we now know what we're going to be t attacking. We know our weather. We did not roll a random event. The random events are down here, 95, uh, 65, 27. There's a few of them in there. Um, so we didn't get a planning event. Uh, we. We can come over here, but we don't really want to put that piece here until later. But uh, we will be uh, area right there when we get there. So um, we'll leave that blank for right now. Um, our A4 is here on the launch. And... Um, we will next go to, oh, excuse me. Um, we have our target, no random event. We go, now we go to our planning. And um, in our planning, we're kind of looking at our munition guide. And we're going to be going after it. Excuse me, area. Oh, boy. A 20 millimeter we always carry with us. Um, and for this one, we're going to probably need that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and keep this like that. Um, LAU-3A. Um, rockets are actually good against this. Um, we've got plus one DRM. So we're in Mark 82 250s. Not so much the bigger bombs. Um, Mark 82, regular 250s, uh, SEs are good against it also. Um, and the 500 SEs are good against it. So we got um, several considerations here. Now we have uh, fuel, fuel tanks, which we'll go over later. Um, there are fuel checks that we're going to have to pass. Um, if you don't successfully area refuel, you have to do a fuel check here. If we go back to re-attack the target, and you will have to go back to re-attack re the target for every different uh, munition you carry, um, you'll have to do a fuel check. And outbound a carrier, you'll have to do a fuel check. So it pays to have some kind of a um, fuel st fuel setup, and what you have on one station has to be on the other station. So your best bet, unless you want to carry a shit, uh, you know, a really big uh, wet, uh, bomb, will be to have your fuel on your center, and you're only allowed up to nine thousand pounds. So your biggest fuel. Is your 400, and that's 2,600 pounds. Um, I will carry a fuel. I'm going to carry it on my center line. We're going to do that last. I'm going to go in the meanwhile. Eighty-two. The five hundred will probably be 
really good, especially the SCs. We can carry them on the left and left and right. We're going to end up hitting this three times because I'm going to be uh, 500 pounds, snake eyes three. I have all these together, the singles and the knots. You know what, before we do this, I'm going to edit. So I'm going to pause this real quick, come back in. I want to edit this and add another um, bomb to that. All right, we had to start all over again to do this. Hopefully I've got everything basically where it was. Um, we Somehow I left out one of these uh, GP3s. So... Um, we can use either the 250s, ideally we want to use the 250s, or we want to use rockets. Um, 250s are the most common, um, or we can use the SCs. I think, I think we'll mess with the, uh, I'm damn half tempted to go for 500 SCs all the way across. Three of them. We can do that. There's snake eyes all the way across. Let's do that. We're going to load up with snake eyes all the way across. And then um, that's uh, three six hundred. So we got three thousand. I mean, three thousand because it's three thousand pounds to work with. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, 400 gallon uh, fuel tank on there just so we sure we have it. Then we've got that plus one DRM there. And we're also going to get a plus one for um, dropping three of these at one time. And should also get a plus one for dropping my entire ordnance load at the same time. I got to reread all that to make sure. Um, like I said, I've done this a couple of times, but I'm still cautiously approaching everything to make sure I'm playing it right and doing it on a video will do that because I'll get lots of uh, comments if not so <clears throat> we have our ordinance done um, we um, got our ordinance load figured out we're going to go ahead and roll next for and I have these kind of out of whack um i like to put things in the order we use them and right now they're not but we can roll for support units before or after munitions anyway we roll for support units um this is an important roll this is how many units you have flying covering your ass as you're flying this mission and it is a very important roll and we roll a six so we're going to have four units available so we're going to go and grab out of our uh, pool here. And uh, as I always do, I've made these um, mimic the uh, piece count. So you can't go and give yourself all kinds of good stuff. you got to get what's uh, there. Um, first and foremost, get an A6 intruder because that's good against everything. Um, second, let's get a... Uh, Air Force, I think it camouflages kind of Air Force F4. Because he's good about, against just about everything. We're going to put these up in our support units too. Um, yeah, the only thing the intruder's not good against is MiGs. So um, we can only have one, one in there at a time. We can put up to two and everything except MiGs. Um, I think ECM, ECM you can have two too, I'm pretty sure of it. Um, first units, uh, check one listed, um, I'm scanning through quickly to verify myself on this.
Hmm. Well, we'll worry about that later. Um, and I know enough to know that I want those to... Um, Uh, we can only have one of MIG, so I like to go heavy on SAMs, but if you, hmm, SAMs are difficult. Let's get a, let's get an F-105 out, go specifically on SAMs, and, um, let's get... Let's get another F4. We'll go uh, Air Force F4. The, I mean, uh, Navy S4 this time. I think it's Navy. I may be backwards on that. One's Navy and one's Air Force. Uh, regardless, we'll go with that as our support units. Um, then we go to launch. I tried to organize these as best as I can. I don't know if I did a good job on it. We'll find out as we play along here. Uh, launch, we roll a D10, uh, we are green, so we're going to have a minus one, so we roll a D10, one, of course it does, possible incident, go to three, one, well, no way, better way to start out the campaign, um, you really have a good chance of still making it, two, we, <laughs> by the skin of our teeth, successfully launch. That puts us up in the um, inbound random event. So we go to the inbound. Um, inbound random events is the first one. I got that much right. And we roll a D10. One. No event. That's probably good. One of my ones, I had that weather changes and it made my weather over target bad because I had poor weather anyway. And we just went down after that. Um, so no random events there. So we will now go to, oops, random, we will go to aerial refuel. And aerial refuel... It, you know, the um, notes on this are, are pretty damn good. As you um, as you're climbing up to the high altitude, and that's the other thing I forgot to do. If we keep track of altitude here, Greg, um, we're going to be at high altitude. Um, to we have to be at high altitude to recon with. I mean, to um, rendezvous with the uh, fueler. As you're climbing up that with a load, you're sucking up fuel, so you have to try to make this um, refuel. Uh, we roll 1d10 to see if we rendezvous or not. Eight, successful refueling, continue with mission, so we do not have to check this for a fuel check. Um, as we go into here, in the... Uh, Okay, support attacks. We only check that. I read that somewhere. We only check that if we... Checks with altitude. He's going to fly out in the support attacks. I'm going to stay at high. Um, that'll avoid the small arms fire. And... Um, It'll avoid the small arms fire and um, kind of makes everything else a little harder to hit us. Except the SAMs. <laughs> Everything's a compromise, um, as always. If you go to low altitude, you avoid the SAMs, but you have a better chance of the trip way getting, and then you have the small arms going to be able to get you too. So, um, medium, you avoid the small arms. You still got a good chance for the trip way to get you. You still have a good chance for the SAMs to get you. So, you might as well go high, in my opinion. Um, 
that's just the way I see it. So we're going to stay high. Um, so first we place our support aircraft in the ones that we want to try to maneuver. We got to place our stuff first. He can go against uh, MIGs, uh, surface to air. I'm going to put him in, because he's more limited, we'll put him in the, the MIGs. The A6 intruder we'll put up here at ECM. We'll put him against the SAM. And we'll put him against the trip away. And we're not going to worry about the small arms because I plan on trying to avoid them. So once we get that in there, um, we got to determine if the radar is on and off. So I have that SAM radar on and off. I pulled that out of the rules so I don't forget it. Um, we roll a D10 on a D die of 0 to 3. The SAM will be turned off. 4. It's going to stay on. So we'll pull up a SAM on. And, um, and now we go to um, the support ca aircraft attack the... Um, Yep, support aircraft now attack the uh, so that'd be defensive fired manly. It only can be placed in the ECM. Yeah. Okay, 12, 11. Wait, what's going on? Okay, so my ECM box is on because we're on, so that helps. All right, um, go to table 11, roll for our attacks first. We attack, our support attacks before our, they attack. We're trying to suppress the, uh, the, uh, defenses. Um, so we have, he does not directly attack anything. He gives us a modifier. Um, on the SAM and AA rolls. So we have an AA attack here. Actually, I've moved them off here. I like to do that better. Um, so we will roll on the triple A here. We're going to have a plus one because we have ECM and the radar is on. And um, so we're going to roll a D10 and add one to it. Three, four is going to be a miss. So he's done. Uh, the F-105 Thunder Chief is going to attack the Sams. He gets a plus one also. Five, six. That would be a suppress. And we're going to put that right there. And... Um, Against the MIGs, we straight up roll. Nine, nice. Disengage. So they will no longer be an issue. Um, so that's actually a good thing. Um, our F4 Phantoms got in there and kicked some ass. So now we go to the support units fire on us. And again, we um, well, let's see. Small arms. Nobody's there to get fired on. They attack once against them and once against us. We're going to rotate down through table 10 first to make sure that uh, we handle all the support attacks first. Um, so. Um, Anything that is not knocked out will fire back at us. Um, and MIGs, I don't think, can fire back once they're disengaged. I would pause and double check that. Right there on the uh, charts, uh, MIGs can no longer attack. And that remains so for the duration. So... Uh, 
we will go to NV support, right? Fire attacks on US support unit. Um, the trip away fires on the Phantom. 1D10. Uh, the weather's good, so there's nothing there. Roll for each ECM port unit in the against uh, AAA and SAM, so that's going to be a minus one. No suppression. Kind of throwing me off here. I really don't need these um, um, Skyhawk modifiers here because you're going to be using that over here. Uh, I could be wrong on that. I thought I had this down, but uh, we'll double check it. I'm going to read this real quick. I'm going to pause this yet again. Well, yes, yeah, so I'm just reading everything. Make sure I play this right so I don't confuse you guys. Um, we uh, roll first for the tripway against the Phantom. And a yes will be a hit and he will be removed. Nine. Damn, he does get it. I'm pretty sure of that. Nine. Uh, eight. So, 8 will be a yes, and our phantom is gone. Um, the Sam will fire at the Thunder, thunder uh, Chief. He gets a 6, minus 1, minus 2, which will be a 4. That's nothing. And uh, these get to no longer fly because they are um, disengaged. So, that is them firing on the support now for them firing on us small arms we're at high altitude they can't hit us trip away they get the fire at us um they get a suppress marker no um they do have a minus one for the ecm so that's minus one we're green that's plus one so that's zero and um That's it. So we're going to be rolling for a zero at high. We roll five. That's going to be one hit. Um, one hit. Uh, roll for table 12 one. So we go to 12 one. Area hit, we roll a D10, 3, fuselage, rolling 12-4, 12-4, we roll a D10, 9, superficial damage, and I don't think there's a place to put any of that, so nothing happens with that one, which is good for us, so we will go back to NV defense fire against the Skyhawk, um, he's done. And actually, these are all back up in there now. And not necessarily. we got to remember the ECM. but And uh, the MiGs do not get the fire because they're disengaged. So we only got the SAMs firing at us. They kind of hit us for some superficial. Uh, once we are done all that, we move into the next zone. Now, I'm going to take a real quick look at our tax table for our um, 500 pound snake eyes and um, 
all altitudes if using them as a standard bomb and if we're using them um, let's see that's yeah that's a snake eye low altitude only if fins deployed Hmm. Deployed. We have a better chance of being on target. We got to come in at low altitude. Low altitude, we avoid SAMs, but everything else comes at us. That uh, trip away is deadly. Uh, and uh, we leave this suppressed on there upon leaving the zone. Sorry, this is going to be a lengthy video as I stumble through things that I thought I understood. Um, let me pause this real quick while I double check the suppressed status. Okay, at the end of the phase, we replace any NV boxes that have two suppressed counters with a single knocked out counter. We don't have any. Um, we turn the radar on, which is already on, and we leave all remaining single suppressed markers and all knocked out and disengaged markers in place. So that stays the same. They do that because uh, the double suppressed can still fire. But then after that, they kind of disperse. I uh, guess they're freaked out after the attack and don't come back. And this all remains the same now for the rest of the uh, cycle. So we can now go to target approach. Uh, we're going to start dropping down in altitude. I'm going to descend to... I'm going to descend to... medium altitude for this one and um, we go through the cycle again this time we'll be a little bit better at it because we know we're going we got our remaining three and the other thing is that if we put a guy up on the ECM and that radar they turn that off he's a wasted unit um, and we're at medium altitude, so we still don't have to worry about the small arms. We no longer have to worry about the um, MIGs either. So I'm going to go ahead and throw him up here again to do ECM and hope that stays on. And then we're going to have um, him go after the suppressed. And we're going to have him go after the trip away. That hurt losing the, uh, the F-4s. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. <clears throat> Use support attacking. Um, so um, we got to oh, we got to check for the Sam again. Two, they're gonna fuck with us and turn the, the uh, radar off. And there is a special rule for that. So we're gonna find that out shortly. U.S. support fire attacking. Um, nobody's attacking the uh, small arms. We will attack the um, triple A, but we're not going to get that modifier this time because the uh, ECM is not turned on. I mean, the radar is not turned on, so um, we don't get that modifier. We're just going to have to roll straight up. We roll a seven. He will be suppressed. I'll take that. And um, that fire's done. We will go to the F-105 against the SAMs. Again, straight up roll. Two, that's going to be a miss. And now it's their turn for a little uh, payback. And um, triple A for...
triple A for um, does not apply if SAM Raider is turned off the die roll modifier does not apply to the SAM attacks yes we know that so um, But it still does apply for the AAA. So I kind of screwed that screwed that up when I did the US. Um, if I point, we're gonna look that rule up and read that again, just so I can verify that I played that correctly the first time through. Five four one one. I, yes, I did run a mission on this, but it's a completely different monster when you're uh, recording because it's like you're under um, pressure to get it right. Okay. When the SAM NV defense box is fired manually radar off at U.S. support unit aircraft that is attacking, there is a minus three die roll modifier. And that's just the SAM, not the triple A. That's just the SAM, that, hence having that next to the SAM only. So, okay, um, so those modifiers could have applied, it should have applied, and we got a mulligan on that because we didn't do it. Not a mulligan, we're just going to let, we're going to play through it. Um, so, the SAM gets a minus three. The triple A should have had one minus one, and it didn't hit anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um... So we're going for them firing against us. That is a minus, does not apply there. Minus one for being suppressed. And minus three for uh, fire control radar off. So that's minus four for the SAM. Five would be one, that's a miss. So they're done firing against them. Now they come after us. If the SAM radar is turned off, do not use this attack table. Okay, so uh, that's another thing I've got to read now. 5411. Okay, I've got to. They do not roll against us. There is a die roll explained above. And I forget what that die roll is because I haven't run in this. Okay. We roll a D10 on a die roll of 0 to 8. The attack in the sky roll is a miss. Skyhawk is a miss. And a 10. Wouldn't you know it? Oh, 0. Duh. I'm used to playing uh, devil boats and stuff now. So that's a miss. Okay, so that's good. And the triple A Boy, did I already roll that and forget? Hmm. I don't think I did roll a triple A. Medium altitude, triple A. Um, minus one. Firing at us. Suppressed marker minus two. We did roll that. That was at five. He went to three. That was a miss. So, yeah, we're done with that one then. So, we're completely done with that. We're going to turn the radio, radar back on. We're going to put all of our support units back in the support deck these stay the same that stays disengaged we move into target attack now we have the area 
we're going again going to roll for enemy fire and we've got to check our altitude and i do want to drop these at um low altitude i think so i'm going to go ahead and um deploy them when I, at low altitude so we got to go in and attack the tor get attacked and do our our uh, what do we call that support attack uh, phase or cycle first so again now we're going to be dealing with the small arms but we're not going to be dealing with the sams um which sucks because i have a sam only um We can completely ignore that Sam for this phase. It will not matter then. So I'm going to put him on the triple A. Oh boy, I can't because this guy's worthless then. We'll keep him ECM. We'll put him on the Sam's. God, I hate this. Even at a minus one, I would rather have him go on there and risk the small arms. This is your compromise. This is what do you want to do? Do you want to take out the SAMs, which the ECM, minimize these guys, or do you want to try to suppress them? If you don't suppress them, you've wasted a unit. These are your decisions. Um, I'm, this is what I'm going to go with, and we're going to deal with it. Um, we're going to check for the SAM on and the radar on and off. And we roll a D10. We get a 2, so they're turning that damn thing off again. Which doesn't matter against us, and it means they're probably not going to hit our, uh, our uh, Thunder Chief either. And I am not going to be pissed going after these guys because we still are going to go up high or medium after this um, to go out of here so the SAMs are still going to attack us in the exit if we don't get them suppressed so <clears throat> support fire um, we're going to go after the tripway first um, for your support units we're going to add one so we roll a d10 for five that's going to be another suppressed on him which is good because that's going to knock him out after this. But he can fire back with two suppressed. Um, Thunder Chief is going to come in on the SAM. Again. We're going to add one. Nine, ten. Going to be knocked out. We're going to just flip that right on over. He can't do shit about it. Nice. Um, so they're done. Now we're going to go NV support fire attack at US support units. Um, the only one it's going to be is this guy right here, the AAA. He's going to be firing for minus two. Minus three for the AAA. Minus one, minus two, minus three, and um, we roll a d10. Eight, minus three is five. He does not hit our support. Now they come after us. All right, small arms first. We're at low altitude. Um... We're green, they're going to add one. So, D10, adding one. Nine, ten, out, well, nine or more, two hits on us, ouch. Um, so, now we've got to go roll on the um, locations. Twelve, one. Two hits. First hit, zero, cockpit, roll for twelve, three.
and we roll a seven superficial damage I'm all right with that superficial that may be here here we go again um Skyhawk damage. I keep getting confused because I'm playing like three different games that have this now. And uh, they all handle things a little bit differently. And um, me, I get confused sometimes. So whatever. It is what it is. Damage to the Skyhawk. Um, let me stop a while and check this out. Oh, you guys don't need to be sitting there while I'm doing it. All right, so I messed that one up a little bit on the first roll we had. We had a, um, this was a fuselage. Not fuselage. Um, boy, I lost track of where I was. Earlier, we had a cockpit roll. I should have immediately come over here and taken off a cockpit. When these are both checked out, they become uh, superficial, but there there is damage to them. <clears throat> so the only time we roll, we get superficial is, is if we screw that one up. So that was a cockpit. Um... This time, road seven, which is superficial, superficial, so we don't put anything down. Uh, whenever you get a 12, whatever roll. And we did get a fuselage. We had a, I know we had a cockpit earlier. Yeah, we just rolled fuselage. I remember, I remember seeing that. I don't know where that die roll is, so it's not showing up here. I show a seven. Oh, that was for, that was for this. The zero was cockpit here. Fuselage was earlier. Okay, so we had a cockpit now and a fuselage earlier. So we should have lost one of these. That gets us squared away. So, for future reference, you roll here. If you get a cockpit, engine, fuselage, tail, nose, wings, you come in here and you put one damage on each one or whatever major section is right here. You then still have to roll on this chart to see what the other damages on the systems so uh, you could get a double whammy all right that being cleared up um that was my small arms and they they hit us that was once that was my first roll and they hit us twice yes they did so we got to roll again four superficial damage that is actually superficial damage and we won't mark that down it would be nice to and i may go in there and edit this somewhere online just to put a superficial in here so we can keep track of how much superficial damage we actually take it's kind of like um um target for the day target for the night devil boats etc just kind of see how much of that extra little bullshit you you got bullet holes in your fuselage or whatever all right so the small arms have ripped us a new one so now we go back to um 
trip away at low altitude. They're going to fire against us with a minus two. Uh, minus three for the ECM. Plus one is minus two. So, minus two for the triple A. One, zero, nothing, miss, nada, and knocked out this engage. So, we can go ahead and take and put our support units back. We've lost none. We take these two suppressed. We return one to the deck. We flip the other and mark him as knocked out. We've done a very good job at suppressing the uh, defenses here. And now we're going to go into the um, attack tables. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to draw up the rules real quick. I'm going to pause this quick while I go in and find the rules for the target so we don't screw this one up. All right. For gaming purposes, all bombs of the same weight are dropped in a single pass. If the Skyhawk has the same bomb or rocket types on each of the two wing pylons on each wing, then add plus one to the die roll on 16. If they're all dropped in the same attack run. Um... We're carry, if the pilot is carrying 12 500-pound bombs, which we are, uh, the player drops all 12 bombs in one pass, which we will, we add one to the die roll in 16. Uh, all rocket pods of the same type are fired on a single pass, and um, if a pylon is destroyed, etc., that'll give you a minus one. A three-bomb MER rack with three 500-pound bombs is carried on an LO and right O pylons. And I think I screwed that one up, didn't I? We're going to check again. I got a little carried away here. Snake Eye. One or three. No, we can carry them on the insides. So, yes, we're fine with that. Um... Pucks with the attack minus one. Okay. So we're just going to drop these right on down. Um, we can come back with our 20 millimeter if we want, but first off, we got to we'll concentrate on dropping our bombs. The snake eyes, we are going to drop. Um, Okay. Okay. Uh, once combat the target approach area has been completed, uh, we place it in the attack area. Yeah, this goes through to what we've already ascertained that we're attacking. Um, we've already done all that. Dropping ordnance on the target. So, each pass requires the Skyhawk to traverse target approach, attack, and exit boxes. Uh, we know that. Um, all standard bobs, excluding snake eyes of the same weight are dropped in a single pass snake eye bombs in standard mode weight are dropped in a separate single pass um snake eye bombs in drag mode are dropped in a separate single pass now we're going to do that right now all in one pass um so if you have sn uh, if you have gp and you have standard, I mean, not standard, snake eye. And you're going to have, you're going to drop some of the GP bombs and then snake eyes. You're going to make two passes. If you have snake eyes, you're going to drop some standard and some um, drag. Then you're going to have to make two passes is basically what that is. Uh, we're going to drop our snake eyes in... Um, 
in um, all at once. So first off, in the ordinance, we had a plus one for them. In the munitions guide against the area, Snake Eye 500s, we get a DRM plus one. So um, we're minus one for us being green, so that's zero. So we're going to roll deployed right here. We're dropping them all at once, which is going to give us a plus one. And we get another plus one for... Yeah, that's it. Plus one. Oh boy, here we go again with the, uh, the um, multiples, three of them. Attacking target. Uh, plus one if they were all dropped in the same run, yes. boy I thought we get a plus one for three bombs too mm -hmm. once result is known well one die tend to determine percentage and points on Table 16. Modifiers are cumulative. Or die roll before 9 are always considered on target. So well, 9, it, we die roll 10. We roll a 3 plus 1 is 4. We're going to be on target regardless of that an MER. Um, so we're on target. We'll put that on there. I apologize for stumbling through this. I will get confident on this as we go. Then once we get that, we're going to roll a d10 to determine the points on, and um, percentage on 16. So... Um, for die roll a nine on either on or off target columns, okay. We roll this for this is where I always get confused. Yeah, we're going to add a, um, adding one for dropping the three bombs from the MER rack. All of the same type is a plus one. So that's plus two. That's This is where you get the die roll, not the other one. Now I gotta double check that too, just to. If all ordnance is dropped at the same time, you get a plus one. That may not be on that one. We may be off target. We're green. We may be off target. Yeah, that's 16. We are off target. We, we just look at the modifiers right here. So we are off target. So I got to redo this. And that's going to suck. But it is what it is. So um, percentage points. This is where it gets confusing because you're rolling for points and percentage. And... Um, We, we get the percentage based on um, where the bombs dropped. We're off target, so we're going to roll here. We get a plus one for dropping 
three bombs for the MER rack. We draw plus one for dropping all ordnance of the same type. So we're going to get a plus two on this. Seven, eight, nine. That's going to give us a D100. That's good. 83. Wow. 83% on an off target. I will take that. So that's 83%. Um, now points. Points are where I start getting confused. Because points we haven't used in anything else. So, um... You're just going to have to suffer with me on this one. Damage percentage rolled, 50%, 35 would be 85, percentage damage done to any resort over 100 is 100, and uh, the points may be the same. Points may be the same. This is a little, this is one I have a little trouble with wrapping my head around because we haven't run this one yet. Points earned are equal to the final percentage. So 90% would be 90 points. 10% would be 10 points. Duh. Okay. So that is it. That's what we get. Um, so it really behooves you to come in with maybe different... So you can make a couple passes. But I'm going to get out get out nice and easy on this one with 83 points um and we well we don't know whether we're going to get out nice and easy yet because we still haven't gotten out we got 83 points scored that's the attack now we got to exit um Enemy gets the fire again, so we're going to bring our support units down. We're actually going to go up to high altitude. Um, and there is no fuel check there, so we go up to high altitude. So the only thing that can attack us at high altitude is gone. So we really don't need to do anything with these guys but we can he can't attack anything he can go against him he can go against him we'll play up a year they can't attack us we can attack them and we don't have any ECM we're going to go ahead and try to just obliterate the uh, interference here um, don't worry about the SAM because there's no SAMs Against the small arms. We're just going to roll twice. Straight up rolls. Um, first roll, three is a miss. Second roll, three is a miss. He gets the fire back. Should have never done this. He gets the fire at each one. Um, Okay, straight up rolls. He gets a six, miss, and a two, miss. So no harm, no foul, but we probably took a chance we didn't need to take. Uh, so that is done. We will rotate again. Outbound to the carrier. Um, we will do a fuel check here, and I 
actually kind of stopped my last game around here, so I don't remember. I think all we do is a fuel check. Um... Outbound to the carrier box, we, uh, upon entering, our, we make a fuel check. So we're just going to go ahead and use up our, um, actually we can return them to the deck. Uh, we're going to use up our 400 gallon fuel tank for this fuel check, which means that Outbound, where do I have it? Inbound, fuel tank check. When a player spends a 400 gallon center line tank, there will be no fuel check roll in the box currently called for it. And, and when the player enters the next box calling for a fuel check, we roll a D10. We're not going to enter another one, so that's going to be a moot point. We avoid that fuel check. We got plenty of fuel to get back. We go to transit to the carrier. Um, We roll on table 17, random event carrier transit box, 5, no event, Um, if we had a table seven or nine roll saying move directly to the transit carrier, we would have had a special roll here to do, but we don't need to. And I may add that special roll to my charts just to make sure I don't forget it. Um, we got no random event. We go move to the carrier approach box. Oh, we do get a, we do get another fuel check. So, um, this one here, we'll go back to here. And the next fuel check we get, we roll for um, five or greater than this box also will be considered sec successful. So we roll a D10, six, it's five or greater. So this fuel check is successful. So we don't have to worry about that. And now we go straight to... Um, Five. Oh, duh. Carrier approach box. Oh, uh, done that. Um, we don't need to eject anything. Um, another bad roll if you'd rolled seven or nine on that first uh, fuel check. Uh, Skyhawk has any external ordinance? We'd eject it. No. And um, we move to the trap box on the carrier. All right, landing. Before landing attempt, adjust Skyhawk's altitude. To land on a carrier move must be at low altitude, of course. And we're going to climb straight on down to low. And we place them on the trap. Once in the trap box, the player attempts to make the landing by rolling a D10 on table 18. And the modifiers are, we're green minus one. So that's all it is, minus one. Six is a five, successful landing. Um, We go to the recovery box. This ends the mission. Post-mission post scoring. So we will put this right here. Then we're going to roll for um, awards, individual awards. Uh, 
I think I would find it very hard to believe that we get a uh, a um, Medal of Honor right away. So let's go to <coughs> mm -hmm. Target Search and Turn. So single mission, we win if uh, we didn't, we win. Player wins by satisfying these three requirements. Survived a mission, returned to carrier, yes. Successfully bombed, yes. Greater than zero, so we win. And then we landed on the carrier, yes. So uh, that's a win, not a draw. We'll put a win there. And then, um, there's an award, individual medals. Once the player has completed a mission and is back on the carrier, Purple Heart is awarded to the player's pilot of the pilot is wounded. We were not, um, after successful completion of five missions, the player is awarded the air medal. We don't get that. Um, we managed to shoot down a MiG fighter. We get a silver star. Um, for the other medals, roll on table 22 to determine if the ward is authorized. If we, if the mission is a draw, we roll once on it. If the mission is a victory, we roll twice on it. Hmm. So we just roll on this for the other one. So, it, wow, Medal of Honor. Come on. Five, Bronze Star. So the bronze star, we get to keep up here. We'll award that, and uh, we'll move us back up the launch for the next mission. That's it. Um, thanks for joining me and watching me stumble through my first mission. I thought I knew what I was doing, but I definitely uh, um, got to get used to it more and maybe make out some kind of sequence of play. Uh, but it's a great game, as you see. We did real well knocking out the opposition and getting in there for a pretty clean target run. I've never had to do any of this, so we'll see how that goes some other time. Thanks for joining me. You all have a great night. And uh, this was Rolling Thunder Skyhawk by Stephen Dixon and uh, soon to be put out by Legion Games. And this is a play test. Thank you.